Hi and welcome to Polly Originals with Fiona Abel Smith. So for today's session I thought we'd have a fun time and make this sort of peacock petal cane and I'm calling that that simply because when I first posted images of this online several people said oh it's like a peacock feather. Now obviously colour wise it's completely not um, but I will show you one that I had a go at later on at the end of this which does look rather more like a peacock. The great thing about this one is you can really change all the inserts. I'm going to show you the principle of how we do it with this nice simple one and then you can change it up and do whatever you like. This one is going to be part of a project that I'm planning on doing. I wasn't initially planning on doing this one as a separate one but the project won't be finished for a couple of weeks yet so I thought I would do this first and I can refer back to this one when I do that in a couple of weeks time so you'll have to wait and see what it is I'm planning to do. Because all we're making today is a cane, it's a very simple equipment list. We've got our polymer clay blade, I sometimes refer to these as tissue blades, little craft knife and a polymer clay roller. Now this one I do use for the inserts, so just to show you the sizes, it's about half an inch or about one and a quarter centimetres wide. I do use one of these measuring sheets, they're the ones I always use. It's freely downloadable from www printablepaper.net and I just laminate it to make it easy to use. I've downloaded the four squares to an inch one but they also have centimetres and apart from that the only tools you need really is a pasta machine dedicated to polymer clay use, some wet wipes and tissues to wipe our hands and keep our equipment clean as we go along. If you don't have a pasta machine then you could simply use a roller instead and roll rather than using the pasta machine for the blends we're doing today. For today's project, the clay I'm using is Fimo Soft, but any of the well-known, recognised brands of polymer clay will work well for this technique. For the amounts I've got, I've got half an ounce or 14 grams of the plum, the raspberry, the lavender, the white and the Windsor blue, and then quarter an ounce or 7 grams of the brilliant blue, the peppermint and the white. So the first thing to do is condition all of the clay thoroughly in their respective amounts and I'm going to put them through on setting number three of my pasta machine and on my pasta machine naught is thick and nine is thin. If you're unsure about conditioning polymer clay or why we do this I do have a little tutorial about that and I'll put a link to that one in the video details below this. So I'll get all the clay conditioned and I'll bring you back when I've got that done. Having got the clay conditioned, I've put it into rough rectangular sheets because we're going to do two Skinner blends, one with these four colours and one with those. And the dark blue for now we're going to put to one side because that's going to be used to wrap around this cane when we get to that stage. So making a Skinner blend, I'm going to do the big one first. This will be the main part of the petal and this will be the inserts that give all the movement and the extra additional interest. So put these three to one side for now. Making a Skinner blend is simply where we're going to blend all the colours through to get a nice sheet where it goes from this colour all the way through to that one. If you're unsure how to do a Skinner blend, I do have a video tutorial showing you about that. And again, I will put the links in the video description below. But for now, I'm just going to plough on. So we're going to put diagonal cuts through the two end pieces, straight cuts through the two middle pieces. Now, I'm not too worried about it being overly neat because when you start doing the Skinner blend it all sort of changes shape and you can manipulate it in the pasta machine anyway but just very roughly we're going to put those like that and these middle pieces go across and I'm just pressing where they join gently in with my finger just to give a little bit of a join and then these two pieces go on the end here and then what we'll end up with is all plum on that end and then it's going to mix into the raspberry, mix into the lavender and finally mix into the white if you want to, give it a little roll now. Simply because we've got quite a lot of clay there. And then I'm going to take it up off the tile, fold it in half, and I'm now going to put it back through on a thicker setting of my pasta machine. So setting number two, fold first. As it comes through, I collect it in my hand, fold it top to bottom, and again, always repeat putting through, fold first, till you end up with a really nice blend. And I'll bring you back when we've got to that stage. 
Once you've got a nice even blend, cut it into two, three or four slices, depending on um, what works well for you. For me, two would be too wide to work to, so I think three is going to be quite a nice width. I'm then going to lay them one on top of the other. Pinch the dark ends together. Put dark end first through the pasta machine on the same setting we're currently on, so setting number two, making sure that I hold onto these ends so they don't splay apart as they go through. So that gives us a nice longer sheet and I'm now going to put it through on my thinnest usable setting. So because my machine's quite a good one I can go straight down to setting number nine which is my thinnest setting. If you think your machine might shred or tear your clay then go down one setting at a time till you get to your thinnest usable setting. So I'll go do that and bring you back when I've got a nice long strip. There we go, lovely long strip of polymer clay. So I'm going to fold that out or let it go out nice and flat along my work surface and I'm just going to roll it up from the white end upwards. I'm not worried about this end being small and not the same as this because you can make it wider as you go. So as you roll up, so spread this till it goes wider. So any bits that go off just join them in. And then I'm just going to carry on doing that all the way up making sure I'm not trapping any air Flatten down both ends and now we're going to chop this into even quarters if we can. So simply seesaw down through your roll, turn 90 degrees, do the same. If you find you've got them very uneven you can always put them back together, give it a bit of a squidge to join it and cut them again. They don't need to be perfectly um, even but just, just roughly is good. And then as you've seen in my other videos all we're going to do is going to pull the sides up get some of that dark colour going up the sides. Technical term, we're going to squidge. So from the bottom, just push it in. Do the same with the second piece. Same thing, bottom squidge in. Put those two pieces together and then repeat for the other two. When you've got both done, put them together as four. Again, push in just at the bottom. When you've got them nicely together, pull across the top. So what we've got is quite a wide triangular shape. Every so often you'll see that I press down on the ends and the whole table shakes. Um, I'm doing that just to make sure that I don't get too much distortion either end and I can use the whole cane. What we've got to say is quite a wide triangle. I want it thinner. So I'm going to press in at the bottom to make it a thinner triangle and along the middle, but also with my thumbs, with this bit flat on the tile, I'm gonna press down quite hard with my thumbs and we're going to do this each time that we start working on this cane. And that's what gives the nice movement with the inserts that we do. I'm looking to go for about three inches in length, actually slightly over at the moment, so I'll just push it back slightly. So not too wide at the bottom, nice and flat at either ends, and about three inches, seven and a half centimetres um, across. Then chop down to two even pieces, and we'll see the start of our cane coming together. So now we need to move on to the inserts, so let's go back to the other three colours that we had. So this time we're going to do a Skinner blend with the three colours, the brilliant blue, the peppermint and the white. As before, one's on the ed end, cut down diagonally, one in the middle, cut down straight, turn that one that way, that one that way, and just put them together exactly the same as we did for the other colours. Little roll if you want. Fold in half, and exactly the same as before, pass the machine back on setting number two for me, so it's one thicker um, because we've got four sheets of clay here than these actually went through. Exactly the same, fold first, collect, fold, put through, collect, fold. And I'm going to put this through till we've got the nice blend. I'm then going to chop that into pieces, same as we did, put them together, put them back through the pasta machine on setting number two, and then go down to my thinnest usable setting till we've got that nice long strip of clay. And I will bring you back when we get to that stage. 
So there we go, there's our nice long thin strip of clay and this time rather than rolling it we're simply going to concertina it about half an inch or one centimetre across and just fold backwards and forwards and this time try to make sure you don't trap any air in the folds on either side. Neaten off any ends by pressing them flat and then I'm just going to with my fingers just round off the corners so rather than having an oblong cane we've got a nice round one and just give it a slight roll to round it off. We're going to take our piece of dark blue clay and at the moment I've got that on setting number three so medium setting and again I'm going to put it down on my thinnest usable setting so for me setting number nine and then we're just going to wrap this cane in one nice coating of the dark blue. We want this same insert to fit five times into our piece about one and a half inches or say just about under four centimeters long so what I'd recommend if you're working in centimeters is to actually before you chop this in half go to about eight centimeters and chop it in half and then keep working on four centimeter sizes for each half or if you're in inches an inch and a half it just makes it easier for doing the calculation so because we need five of these pieces I'm going to reduce this by simply rolling it till it's seven and a half inches or about 20 centimeters in length And then just chop a little bit off distorted end and then five pieces. Because we rolled this you might find that the ends change so although the blue's up that way it might have twisted. So just have a check. That one's okay. Actually that one's okay. Yep. If any of them have then you just simply sort of give a bit of a twist to make sure that they're all the right way up. But they're all fine, which is great. So let's go back to our piece we had. Put it back roughly so it's sort of going together and then put both pieces down towards you. Now, again, this one's all about where you put these placements in. So the very first one we're going to put in is right at the top of this thing. So I'm going to press in with my roller towards about as close to the top as I can get while still leaving some of that plum colour showing. Press in on that side and repeat on the other side. Because we're working in one and a half inch or four centimetre sizes, take your dark blue clay and chop yourself off a couple of strips that are the right width. You then take one of your pieces and deciding whether you want blue at the top or blue at the bottom. I'm going to go for blue at the bottom. Sit your piece in there so that it fits nicely so the blue's at the bottom both sides. Put the dark blue clay on. Cut it when it gets to the bottom. And put your other piece on. Make sure it fits at the top first and then gently pull it round the bottom. So we're back to having our triangular cane. So all we're going to do now is do exactly the same as we did before. Pressing it in, making it longer, but most importantly, pressing down at those sides to make it flatter. So again, with one side flat, with my thumb, I'm really going to press down to make the bottom edge a lot thinner. And as I say, it's that pressing down that creates the movement in the inserts that we've put in. So keep going till you go back to that three inches, about eight centimetres width, and when we've done that, you're going to chop in half. Exactly the same as before, fold them towards you, but this time we're going to go slightly further down. So not right at the top, but just a little bit further down. Imagine in your mind that you're having to put five inserts in and each one will be slightly further towards the bottom. As before, remember which way you're putting the ding, so I'm putting mine blue side down. Take your dark blue clay, 
put in. Chop off and put your two pieces back together again. Fitting the top first and then pressing down towards the middle. And then exactly the same before, we're going to repeat until we've got this reduced and narrowed until it's three inches or um, eight centimeters in length. And then we're going to chop it into two pieces. So I'll fast forward through that bit. This time the groove is going to go halfway down but apart from that it's repeating exactly the same process. So put your thing in, put the blue clay on, put it back together and reduce it down again till it's three inches, seven, seven, seven or eight centimetres in length. This time we're nearly down towards the bottom but not quite. And exactly the same again, put your insert in, put the blue clay in and reduce down in the same way. And the very last one goes in at the bottom. That needs to roll a little bit wider. So put him in the same way. Put the little bl blue insert in. two pieces together but this time we're going to make this into a petal shape so making sure you've got rid of any trapped air around this what we're going to do is we're going to put these corners in to make them rounded and then this one needs to come back out to be the back of the petal so very gently just with the edge of your thumb just start to round off one edge, then with sort of between your thumb and fingers you can push in to make that rounder still. Both hands start to work on it and so you're just rounding that off. Once you've got that one side done, turn over and do the same with this one. And then as you start to push in these sides so it becomes almost like a square or a diamond cane so you can start pressing down to elongate this outer side. So I'm also pressing inwards to make this less long and then when you chop down through have your petal cane. So that is the principle of how this cane came about. As I say it was meant for another project and I will go on um, to do that one in a week or two to show you what I was going to use it for but in the meantime you can just experiment with that one and have fun. 
rather than doing a concertina cane and this one I just did a round cane so with the white in the middle and then just with the peppermint on the outside and actually this is one thing that's interesting to note the colourway here this one it went from raspberry through to a tangerine through to a gold and then to a yellow but because I was using the purple rather than the dark blue we used on here where the purple met the yellow and the gold it created this sort of dusky colour sort of almost a, a grey colour so be aware of that um, when you're using this cane think about the colour at the bottom here and what colour you're using to do the out um, side of your cane so that was again just the single colour on the inside you can of course go a bit further so with this one I went for a darker red and then a raspberry and a lilac and used the purple as the um, covering colour so this time it didn't create any problem on the inside but this one I changed every time I did an insert I changed the colour so I had a very light um, blue aqua to start with then I had a brilliant blue then I went to the peppermint then I went to the apple green and then I had a mixture in the middle for all of them and then finally you can also do something like a peacock cane so for this one we had emerald green and then the tropical green down into white as the background colours and then for the inserts for nearly all of them so four of the inserts I did a tiny little bit of um, brilliant blue peppermint but mainly apple green yellow and white and then for the middle bit for the bit that looked like a peacock we've got gold peppermint and brilliant blue and I also had a little off cut of this before I put it down into the outside which I then wrapped right the way around the outside so there we go that's the peacock petal cane all finished you can do it in random colors sort of nice and bright or go for a more sort of authentic peacock look i hope you enjoyed it i hope you have fun with that one i can't wait to see all the wonderful things you make thanks so much for watching and a particular thank you to those of you who subscribe i really do appreciate it right i'm off to get the rest of that project done hopefully you'll like that when i've got that one sorted and hopefully i'll see you next time that's it for now bye